video in this video i shall be discussing about aromatic compounds before beginning the video i have a request that i would request you to like the video and i am keeping a target of 50 likes so that i come to know that how many people are interacting with my content okay so let me begin with this video so basically at least two questions will be coming from this chapter aromatic compounds in j advanced so kindly listen to it very carefully so first of all i'll be dealing with reduction of aromatic compounds This is a simple concept. I will be taking two to three examples to prove it. If I have nitrobenzene, okay, I react it with H two NiC. Then what is the product we are getting is aniline, as NO two will be reduced to NH two, but the ring will not be reduced because it is aromatic and hence it is stable. But if I take H two NiC further. and vigorous conditions or extreme conditions sometimes also written as high temperature and high pressure then the ring will also be reduced okay so this will be the final product that i'll be getting <coughs> let me take one more example if i take allyl benzene i react it with h2 nic so first of all what has to be reduced is the linear chain that is on the benzene so it will be ch2 ch3 i am taking the similar thing in the previous example like h2 pdc vigorous condition h2 nic vigorous condition so i'll be getting the ring to also be reduced and cyclohexane et so this is basically reduction and let's go to the next point which is oxidation and one of the most important things in this chapter so let's deal with oxidation so the standard notation for oxidation is written as o okay so o is basically kmno4 H plus, so it means it is a very strong oxidizing agent. So let me tell you a thing here. If I have H, I can oxidize it to OH. So this is basically what is oxidation. Oxidation means adding of oxygen. So I am adding oxygen here. Just that is the basic thing. Let me take an example. If I have benzene CH two CH two CH three, I am oxidizing it. Now remember KMnO four H plus is a very good oxidizing agent. it is chh chh ch2h so the first thing is i have to think that which hydrogen should be oxidized so the hydrogen will be oxidized which is the weakest bond now which is the weakest bond here this will be the weakest bond here why because if it breaks and we get a carbocation carbonion or a radical also then what will happen that thing will always get into resonance with the aromaticity of the ring and hence that reagent will be stable or the intermediate will be stable and hence we have to break this hydrogen so what is the product that i'll get is benzene first time we do oxidation we get h to be oxidized to be oh if i do again oxidation i'll be getting there only once it will be mentioned oxidation in the question okay i am taking step by step see oh oh i have told you in my earlier videos that two oh on a single carbon are not stable so what i'll be getting is H2O can always be removed. Dehydration can always occur. What I'll be getting is benzene, CO, CH2, CH3. Okay, but it can be oxidized further. Now, how we can do it? I basically tautomerize this compound. This H will be here. I can tautomerize it. This bond goes here. This bond comes here. This bond goes here to form OH. So what I'll be getting here is COH <coughs> double bond CH. CH3, I can even oxidize it further. See the oxygen, the KMnO4 H plus will break this bond to give me oxygen here, oxygen here. So what I'll be getting the final product to be benzoic acid. Okay, and the other will be CH3, COH, CH3 COH, which can be oxidized further. What I'll be getting is acetic. as in so what what is the thing i want to tell you here is see you can now notice it if i have benzene and any group r is attached to it any type of group means alkyl group so what i'll be getting is on oxidation one of the products will always be benzoic acid okay so this has to be understood i have told you with the help of a proof now let me take another example to generalize it if i have benzene ch3 CH3 I oxidize it now what i have told you if i have r group on the benzene it can always be oxidized so you can do the procedure always but let's do it quickly so it will be COH 
the lower one the para position will also be oxidized and COOH so this is how you have to proceed in this type of questions now let me take another beautiful example to show you that what happens if we don't have a hydrogen there then what has to be oxidized if I have CH3 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 on oxidation now what we see here actually is that we have a carbon chain but that does not have any hydrogen so basically we cannot input the OH into it so what you have to do here the linear chain is not oxidized but in instead the aromatic is oxidized this is under vigorous conditions you have to remember vigorous conditions okay so this is oxidized so what I will be getting is CH3 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 CO OH so this will be the final product that is the ring is oxidized here ring is oxidized so this is one more important concept in this chapter okay but vigorous conditions must be there so what happens if I take this compound benzene and a cyclohexane together on oxidation I ask what it is I have always told you this bond will be broken this bond will be broken and COH will be formed so COH CO OH. So this is how you to proceed into the oxidation of such type of compounds. So now let's go to the important point that is electrophilic substitution. Now benzene is uh, prone to electrophilic substitution. Why? Because it has lone pairs so or basically you can say the electron pairs due to the aromaticity due to the conjugation and hence electrophile is E plus. I can take any electrophile to be E plus which is electron deficient. So the electron deficient will try to attack the positions which are electron rich. Now how to decide which positions are electron rich? Let me take some examples to show it. The first example that I am taking is phenol. On drawing the resonance structures we see that double bond O plus H negative comes here. Okay in the first then this comes here this bond goes here. What I will be getting is double bond O plus H now minus goes to the para position this thing similarly in the next structure you will be getting the negative to be here so what I am seeing in this phenol is actually the minus sign the negative sign which is in resonance goes to the ortho or the para position now tell me one thing electrophile is electron deficient so it will try to attack the position which is electron rich and hence electrophile will tend to go to the para position or to the ortho position for this group so hence phenol is ortho para directing group okay so this is the basic concept behind this now let me go to the next example which is phenoxide phenoxide okay so what I do here is I ask you a question that what will be getting on drawing the resonance structures so double bond O minus this thing go further this goes here this goes here so basically on drawing all the resonance structures I will be seeing that uh, I will be getting the minus sign to be on the ortho or the para position and hence this will also be a ortho para directing group now my question is that is phenol stronger ortho para directing group or O minus that is phenoxide a stronger ortho para directing group okay Phenoxide will be a stronger ortho para directing group. Why? Because in the first case, I will be getting charge separation. So, this positive will always try to attract the negative towards it so as to neutralize and get a phenol. But here you can see there is no charge separation, only a single charge that is, negative charge is going all over the ring, and hence it will be a better group in terms of electrophilic substitution. Now, next example is benzoic acid okay now what happens here is this bond goes here this bond goes here so what happens is I'll be getting double bond C O minus OH positive sign on the ring now this positive sign can go to the ortho position and the para position now what we see actually here is that the negative that the positive sign goes to the ortho and the para position and hence electrophile will try to attack the meta position why because it is already electron deficient so why it will go to the electron deficient position and hence benzoic acid will be meta directing group so okay so this is how you have to decide whether a group is ortho directing para directing or meta directing now let's go to a simple question that was asked so if I have benzene CO O and benzene 
I ask you, I take any electrophile, where will the electrophile get attached to the ring? So let me begin with a question. Okay, so see, this group will tend to take the electron density from this ring and hence this ring will become electron deficient. Now our, now our E plus is itself electron deficient, why it will try to attack the ring which is itself electron deficient. So this ring is taken out of the picture. Now only one ring remains, why? Because O will tend to give the electron density to the ring and hence this ring will be electron rich. So where will the E plus attack here? We know that O, so crowding is there near the ortho position and hence electrophile will attack the para position. So this will be the answer. So what I'll be getting is benzene, CO, O, benzene and E will be attached to the para position, any electrophile. Let me take one more example. If I have, a question is asked, CH3, CCH3, that is a tertiary group is attached here. I react it with NO2+. Now what is the answer that I am getting? This question is asked. So basically we can see here that for this, this group, which of the positions will be activated? Ortho, ortho and para. There is no resonance effect on the meta group and hence that will be a deactivated position. For this CH3, for the methyl group, the ortho positions and the para positions will be activated for the attack. Okay. So now let me decide. See all the positions are equally electron rich. But what happens here actually is this position and this position are actually crowded. Why? Because of this group. This is a non-planar compound sp3. So NO2 plus will try to attack so it will be hindered. So that will be the minor product. But what will the major product is? Major product will be when NO2 plus attacks here. So what I will be getting the answer to be CH3, NO2 and tertiary group. So you have to always take care of crowding also. So many of the concepts are involved. Just get the concepts clear. This is a very easy chapter. Let's go to the next example which is benzene NH CO CH3 and on the para position I have a CH3. I give an electrophile. I ask what is the answer. So first of all we can see that this NH the nitrogen has a lone pair here. So the lone pair is actually in resonance here also and here also. So what actually happens is the lone pair is in resonance on this on the other opposite side also. Hence the total uh, electron density in the ring actually gets reduced. But still it has the lone pair and tell me is carbon a better see a lone pair is there then it is always a better donor you have to remember. So this position will be more activated than these two positions because it has its ortho effects here only so E plus will attack here so what is the product I will be getting is NH CO CH3 CH3 and an electrophile so this is how you have to solve such type of questions now the next topic is Friedel craft Friedel craft alkylation so let me tell the basic phenomena behind it if I take any RCL I react it with ALCL3 or any Lewis acid so what I'll be getting is R plus and ALCL4 minus so basically I'll be getting a carbocation now carbocation can always rearrange and hence I'll be getting a rearranged product let me show you an example here if I have benzene I react it with CH3, CH, CH3, CH2, Cl, Al, Cl3. I ask you what is the product? Okay, so first of all what I will be getting is R plus that is CH3, CH, CH3, CH2 plus and Al, Cl4 minus, no use of writing that. Now this carbocation then rearrange here with the help of a hydride shift to get me the most stable carbocation that is this, tertiary is always more stable. Now what we have learned, if we have any electrophile then it can always attack the ring, <coughs> so it will attack the ring. So what I will be getting the final product to be benzene C CH3 CH3 CH3. So you have to always remember that the rearrangement has to occur in this case. Let me give you one more example here. The question asked is, 
I have benzene plus CH two OH H plus. So this is the question asked. Now how to proceed? First of all, you have to form the carbocation here. So H plus will react here, H two O plus, and carbocation will go here. So what I'll be getting is CH two plus ring expansion. So what I'll be getting is this thing. I take benzene. This reacts here. So I will be getting the final product to be a rearranged product. So hence a carbocation must be formed, which must which must be rearranged to get the final product. Let me go to the last topic in this chapter that is Friedel Craft acylation. How to proceed in it? What is general thing? I have RCOCl. I reacted with AlCl3. What I'll be getting is RCO plus and AlCl4 minus. Now see the carbocation is not a proper carbocation, but this carbocation is itself stable. Why? I can show you here. I have this thing. It can always go into resonance. RCO plus. Now this thing has its octet octet completed in case of oxygen, and hence we have learned that octet completed is always more stable. So this is more stable, and hence it does not need to rearrange. So we'll be getting the electrophile to be RCO plus. Let me show you a simple example here. If I have benzene plus CH three CH CH three CO Cl, I react it with Al Cl three. What is the product that I'm getting? See, first of all, you have to form the carbocation, so it will be CH three CH CO. This will be the carbocation that will be formed. Now, this cannot rearrange in Friedel-Crafts acylation. There can be no rearrangement, so it will attack the ring. So, what I'll be getting is benzene CO CH CH three CH three. Okay, so this is how this. chapter gets completed and if you like the video then please leave, leave a thumbs up at the end and best of luck for all the exams thank you